The AI community has been outraged after Sam Altman's recent announcements about the future developments of GPT-5 slash GPT-6. So this is the post that started it all, okay? And I need to get into this because the outrage has been absolutely insane. If you've been on Twitter in the past 48 hours, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And I've seen videos, I've seen, you know, just so many different, you know, viewpoints and stuff. So I think it's important that I discuss this. So essentially, what has happened here is that Sam Altman has made a post talking about future updates to GPT-5 and, you know, the future models and where they're going to be taking essentially the product that is ChatGPT. Now, essentially, it starts with some pretty mundane stuff. It says, you know, we made ChatGPT pretty restrictive to make sure we were being careful with mental health issues. And we realized that this made it less useful slash enjoyable to many users who had no mental health problems. But given the seriousness of the issue, we wanted to get this right. Now, if you aren't familiar with it, what he's talking about there, there is like this entire just crazy, crazy thing that happened with AI where people had AI psychosis, which is still ongoing. Some people ended up unfortunately taking their own lives. And it was all because AI was so convincing, so human-like that people just had, you know, really extraordinary relationships with the AI. So they're saying that, you know, they're going to be rolling back those restrictions. And now this was pretty normal because this is what we expected. This was something that, you know, if you've been in the AI community for the last couple of months, you'll know that it's been uh, a completely developing story. Now, this is where things started to get crazy and where the backlash started to come. Now, at first, it doesn't seem like what Sam Altman is saying is that crazy. He just says that in December, as we roll out age gating more fully and as part of our, you know, treat users like adults principle, we will allow even more like, for example, erotica for verified adults. Now, I didn't first at first think this was that crazy. OK, and that was because I'd actually seen some, you know, things and posts from Sam Altman from a while back. There was actually, I think, a post on Reddit where he did actually mention this ages ago. And I'll, you know, bring that back into the question. But I'm going to show you guys why people were outraged and why I personally understand where the outrage is coming from, but why I also don't think you probably should be as outraged as you are. So essentially, right, you know, we've seen that, you know, there is the blowback, okay? People are saying that, you know, Sam Altman says that, you know, um, OpenAI is not the elected moral police of the world. ChatGPT is going to allow erotica for adults. You know, now that we've mitigated the mental health issues, you know, people are just like, you know, this is reckless negligence at the beginning. They were experimenting with users, yada, yada, yada. Then we also had people saying, you know, I'm done with this crap. Shame on you, Sam Altman. Shame on Elon for Annie. And shame on anyone for selling AI as a companion or friend. Erotica, this is what we're using AI for. So you have to understand that, like, this isn't just first base, like, oh my God, they're, they're, they're enabling Erotica. Let me understand and show you guys why people are so outraged about this, okay? And this is because OpenAI have consistently stated, okay, multiple times, maybe not OpenAI, but Sam Altman, you know, the CEO, has stated in several interviews that, you know, they're pretty much against erotica and that kind of content. And let me show you guys why it gets crazy. So at the start of this year, OpenAI said to everyone that OpenAI is a lot of things now, but before anything else, we are a super intelligence research company. We have a lot of work in front of us, but the path in front of us now is lit and the dark areas are receding fast. We feel extraordinarily grateful to get to do what we do. And so from this statement, of course, you're going to believe that, yes, that's right. And I remember making a video on this. This was literally at the start of the year. Things have actually gone pretty quickly, but please do remember this statement. But before anything else, we are a super intelligence research company. Now, here's the thing, okay? Two months ago, there was an interview where Sam Altman was speaking with Cleo Abram and this is where Sam Altman was talking about GPT-5 and what is next. Now pay attention to what Sam Altman actually says in this interview. And I think this is the crux of why so many people are feeling not deceived, but a little bit disappointed in the route that OpenAI is taking to achieve, you know, massive user adoption. Sam Altman was speaking with Cleo Abram and this is where Sam Altman was talking about GPT-5 and what is next. Now pay attention to what Sam Altman actually says in this interview. And I think this is the crux of why so many people are feeling not deceived, but a little bit disappointed in the route that OpenAI is taking to achieve, you know, massive user adoption. There's a lot of short-term stuff we could do that would like really like juice growth or revenue or whatever and be very misaligned with that long-term goal. And I'm proud of the company and how little we get distracted by that, but sometimes we do get tempted. Are there specific examples that come to mind? Any like decisions that you've made? Um, 
Well, we haven't put a sex bot avatar in ChatGPT yet. That does seem like it would get time spent. Apparently it does. I'm gonna ask my next question. <laughs> okay, so of course that is one thing that you have where Sam Altman literally is saying that looks, we haven't put a sex bot avatar in ChatGPT yet. This was somewhat of a dig at Elon's Grok slash Annie situation where he's put like, you know, some kind of weird AI companion, which is like just really a bit too adult themed in my honest opinion. Um, and this was one of the things that people kept quoting because it's like, wait a minute, you're saying that, you know, you're this prestigious AI research super intelligence company and you're saying you haven't put that in chat GPT yet, but now you're, you know, allowing restrictions for people to basically do what they want with the AI. Now, you can also see here that once again, you know, you take a look at what Sam Altman said. He said, you will definitely see some companies go and make Japanese anime sex bots because they think they've identified something here that works. And of course, this is a not so subtle dig at Grok. Like it couldn't be more of a subtle dig at Grok. And he said, you will not see us do that. Now, I think he's of course been very careful with his words here because OpenAI by definition have not done that. Like they of course haven't added that kind of AI companion to their offerings and services. And I think if they did, they probably would get a lot of, you know, flack. But the main thing people are wondering is that how do you go from saying we're a super intelligence company, we are working on, you know, artificial super intelligence, this is all what we're focused on, to just, you know, focusing on AGI, which a lot of people have been memeing that this is artificial gooning intelligence, which is pretty funny. Like I said, you know, I wanted to get AGI and now we're getting a different version of AGI, which is pretty funny. Now, of course, this situation, it blew up so much, right, that the entire thing had to get a response from Sam Altman. And we're going to dive deep into why I think he's actually making this decision. And of course, you can have your opinions on why AI is going this way. So he said, right, that this tweet about the upcoming changes to ChatGPT, it blew up on the erotic point so much more than I thought it was going to. It was meant to be one example of us allowing more user freedom for adults. Here it is and a better effort to communicate it. As we have said earlier, we are making a decision to prioritize safety over privacy and freedom for teenagers, which is a good thing. And we're not loosening any policies related to mental health. This is a new and powerful technology and we do believe minors need significant protection. We also care very much about the principle of treating adult users like adults. And as AI becomes more important in people's lives, allowing a lot of freedom for people to use AIs in the way that they want is an important part of our mission, which is kind of true. And it doesn't broadly across, you know, across the board, we still not allow things that can't cause harm to others. And we will treat users who are having mental health challenge crises very different from users who are not. Without being paternalistic, we will attempt users to achieve their long-term goals. And of course he says, but we are not the elected moral police of the world. In the same way that society differentiates other appropriate boundaries we want to do the similar thing here basically saying that you know some people want to watch r-rated movies and we aren't going to be the ones to say you can't do it we're not the moral police of the world we just want to be able to you know make you guys do whatever you want now you guys can have your opinion on what they want but i personally don't think it's about that i think that this company OpenAI, is a company that is focusing on users over everything and I think that yes, they are probably going to get to AGI slash super intelligence. But I do think that at one point, Sam Altman realized that AI is becoming saturated, commoditized, and they kind of need to ensure long-term survival of the company. Now, of course, this is just my opinion, but let me show you guys why I state that. So in an interview, Sam Altman said that, you know, OpenAI's core product remains ChatGPT. And he said he's, he's focused on making it more flexible and more usable in daily life, more useful, yada, yada, yada. He says he already relies on it for everything from work to parenting questions. And he does say, he said, there are some limits. The models have already saturated the chat use case. They're not going to get much better and maybe they're going to get worse. Now he's talking just about the chat use case because beyond chat, of course, if you're just talking about chat, I'm not talking about voice and AI avatars and that kind of thing. You can't really do so much like the models can already speak in the way that you want them to. They can, you know, pretty much emulate any style and message you in every single way. So text is pretty saturated. But what most people haven't realized, and I spoke about this quite a while ago, and I think I even made a video that's saying, you know, opening eyes changing their mission. And I don't know where the video is, but it certainly does exist on my channel. If you scroll back a few months, you'll be able to find it. But this is an interview that wasn't like publicized like everywhere. This was like a very, very small interview, not small, but like it just didn't get as many views 
Um, and I don't think a lot of people realize this. And this was an interview, right? And this was a discussion about AI commoditization and the future of OpenAI's business model. And he argued that cutting edge large language models will eventually become commoditized, meaning that the unique long-term value will lie in owning platforms with massive active user bases rather than constantly chasing the most advanced model. And essentially what this means is that right now we've got a situation on our hands. If you look at Kimi K2, if you look at Anthropic, if you look at China's open source ecosystem, they are rapidly catching up to what ChatGPT and other companies have. If we're just going off the base chat experience, I'm not talking about coding benchmarks, even though some of those are doing really well. And of course, you could say that some LLMs have different tastes. But if we're talking about, you know, on the broad spectrum for the average user who's just asking what they want to eat for breakfast on the chat model, that is becoming quickly commoditized, which means that if this company has to focus on something else as a better moat. The LLM, you know, AI software moat is, is like the model is no longer, you know, a moat. Like previously they had GPT-4 and you could only access GPT-4 through their systems. But now when we look five to 10 years from now, you know, what's going to be more valuable in five years? A 1 billion daily active user destination site that doesn't have to do customer acquisition, customer acquisition, or a state of the art model. And Sam Altman said the 1 billion user site, I think. So his comments are essentially emphasizing the distribution and data fly rules over raw model sophistication, which is, you know, what companies like Google and Meta have done rather than, you know, technical su supremacy alone. And I think that is why he's choosing to let more people into the ecosystem because there's probably like a lot of people who want to do, let's just say adult things with the model more than what we know. And I do think that that area is probably, you know, something that OpenAI would like to capture whilst they're still on their quote unquote mission to AGI. Now, of course, might be a different kind of AGI as some people are memeing, but I do think the point here is that, you know, this kind of thing that what we're seeing, you know, like with these kind of AI companions, unfortunately, I do believe that it's going to be a part of the future, whether we like it or not, whether it's one company that builds it and, you know, no, and, you know, it just slowly takes over, whether it's OpenAI that builds it. I think that OpenAI are in between a rock and a hard place. Do they lose the quote unquote mandate by just sticking true to their mission? And then eventually later down the line, they don't have as much a distribution or do they just say, you know what? We're gonna, you know, allow you to be adults and do what you want. And I think provided that OpenAI doesn't do this and doesn't push it into people's faces, I don't think it will be as bad as people seem to be. So, I mean, it's completely up to you what you guys think of the situation. I think that it's purely just a, you know, user acquisition mode. I don't think OpenAI are trying to play the more high ground. They're just like, look, in five years, people are going to be doing crazy things with models. So we might as well let people do it now and we might as well have those users. I think that's what they're arguing. And of course, I do think that, you know, it's going to be really interesting to see how the company does evolve because they have continually stated that, you know, they're now a super intelligence research company. And I do hope that they don't stray from their mission because remember, the goal was super intelligence. The goal was, of course, super intelligence, which is super smart. And let's just hope that things don't change to something more sinister while, you know, that could potentially happen. And so I actually managed to find that Reddit post where Sam Altman himself actually said this in 2024. And like I said, this was something that most people did miss, but he did say that we totally believe in treating users like adults, um, but it takes a lot of work to get this right. And right now we have more urgent priorities and we would like to get this right someday. So this was said a year ago and someone asked, you know, in a perfect world, you know, would users be able to toggle if desired and SFW content within reason? And he, he actually did say this a year ago. So this is why I'm saying, you know, people are split 50-50. He did already state that this was going to happen with OpenAI someday. So I don't think that OpenAI is really going to lose their mandate that much unless they actually start actively promoting that stuff. Kind of like, you know, uh, Grok is with Annie, which I don't think they would ever do. But at the same time, some people are starting to question that because, you know, OpenAI has kind of, you know, bounced around in terms of their goal. So it will be interesting to see. But let me know what you guys think about this entire situation.